Hi, I'm Sunny Justice, and I'm talking to you today from El Valle de Anton, Panama, and I'd like to share a little bit with you about how I got here. So I was born in the U.S. in Cincinnati, Ohio, and my family moved extensively. I've lived in about 20, 30 places in the U.S. So there was never a place in the U.S. that was geographically home to me. Um, in 2005, as one of the co-founders of Burt's Bees, the natural skincare company, we had just sold it. And at that time, I was feeling extraordinarily frustrated with the U.S.'s um, growing intervention in the Iraqi war. And I'm a peace activist, and I made the conscious decision that I no longer wanted to live in countries that supported war against other countries. And so, as soon as I made that conscious decision, I started getting this daily message in meditation that said, go to Panama. And I was so surprised because I didn't really know anything about Panama. I had never been to Panama, never explored going to Panama. But for eight months, every single day, my guides told me, go to Panama. And after the first five months, they got a little more specific and said, go to Panama and build a temple. I didn't really know what that meant, but after eight months, I finally came to Panama at the end of 2005. And within 45 minutes of being in the country, I bought a property in Costco Viejo, the old city, and I created the first Love Daily Temple, which was a meditation temple for people of all paths and faiths. And that's how I got to Panama, which sounds kind of crazy, but that's how I got here. So I lived here for the first three years in the old city, which was fun and exciting, and I restored a building, but then it just got too hot and too noisy for me. Oh, you see, you can see my puppy here chewing on my clothes. Um, it just got too hot and too noisy during the time of its um, UNESCO World Heritage Award and everything was under renovation. And so one weekend in his desire to get away from the city, I came out to El Valle de Anton and I absolutely fell in love with this town and the weather and the beauty and the lushness. So um, I bought a property in 2008 and then I spent a year building it and this became the second Love Daily Temple in Panama. So I was hosting meditation once a week in the city and once a week out here, which feels like it's been one of my contributions to Panama, is um, bringing more light, more meditation, more beauty, more goodness. And so that's a little bit about how I got here. After my first visit to El Valle, I decided I definitely wanted to own a property there. I had looked at places like Altos de Maria and different communities that were also outside the city, but many of them didn't have any community yet built around these new developments. And I was really interested in um, living in a town that already had an existing community. And so, um, upon a couple of visits, I hired a realtor and started looking at different properties. And my style of living is very different than many of the traditional Panamanian home styles, which often had many more small rooms. They were more structured, and I like to have big open spaces. So I came to the conclusion my best option would be to either build something or buy something and completely remodel it. So I bought this property and in El Valle we don't have addresses, we have names of the property. And my property is called Casa del Alma, which is Soul House. And it's very interesting because one of the things during the time in Panama, I've been very um, heavily guided through meditation and my guides. And they told me a story that 
One of the things that's so important about Panama is that there are tremendously deep wells of spiritual energy that are held on reserve below the landmass of Panama that they can pull from and send to different parts of the planet as needed. And as soon as I walked onto this property, I could feel literally the pools of divine energy under my feet. And so they brought me here. I was able to buy this. I was able to name it Soul House. I had 40 workers. It's a big property. I have five different buildings. There's a main house, a guest house. The guest house has a kitchen, there's a rancho, and then there's a building where there's a spa and a gym and a temple. And so I had 40 workers for 10 months. But it was, we meditated every morning, we did chimes, I fed them three times a day. I was the general contractor, I did all the design, I did everything, it was a lot. But, you know, everybody talks about how long it takes and how challenging it is. I did not have that experience. But I also brought a lot of love and support to all the workers by feeding them and letting them contribute in the creation of this beautiful property. So, um, you know, I feel like I'm in heaven on earth. I feel so extraordinarily blessed to live here, particularly during this time of COVID. You know, I talk to friends of mine that live in apartment buildings in cities in the U.S., and I can't even imagine how they've been able to make it through during this time of COVID and quarantine. Because I may be quarantined on my property, or at least I was, we're not anymore, but it's like being in heaven on earth on my property. So it was never a sacrifice. It always felt like a gift. One of the most enchanting parts about El Valle is, of course, nature. Um, we're a very popular tourist destination, particularly on the weekends, whether it's Panamanians coming from the city to El Valle because it's typically 10 to 15 degrees Fahrenheit cooler in El Valle than it is in the city. And they come here to be outdoors. We have exquisite hiking. Well, actually, El Valle is one of the largest um, volcanic craters in the world. So in order to be a volcanic crater, that means the volcano collapses in on itself. And most volcanic craters are not large enough to actually become inhabited after they're dormant. But so we have mountains surrounding this entire area. And that was one huge, huge volcano hundreds of thousands of years ago because our valley is pretty enormous. So all of these surrounding mountains are filled with hiking trails and waterfalls and swimming holes and incredible birds. They say that we have more species of birds in El Valle than in the United States and Canada combined. So, you know, it's full of nature and outdoor activities, and that's really what most people come here for. Biking, hiking, running, and, you know, going on the trails and swimming up in the falls and things. So there's a lot of that to do. There's, we don't have a lot of shopping. Um, we certainly have everything you need to buy in terms of food, but we don't necessarily have a lot of things like clothing stores. And it's interesting because once you don't have a lot of choice, you realize how little you need. I realize that whenever I go to the U.S., I buy a lot more because there's a lot more choices. <laughs> and when I'm here, I don't really need to do that because it's not necessary. So it's just interesting how your psyche adjusts, yet you don't ever feel like you're missing out on anything. So we can get basically all the food items that we need here. Plus we have quite a few really lovely restaurants now. You know, when I first moved here in 2008, it was not nearly as built up as it is now. We have sidewalks that go from one end of town to the other, as well as bike paths that go all through El Valle. So it makes it very safe and easy to travel, very accessible. 
For the things that you might not be able to find in town, be it maybe some hardware items or things like you're remodeling your house and you need materials you can't get here, we go down the hill like 40 minutes to Coronado, which is the biggest city close to us. And we're 35 minutes down the mountain to the ocean and then another 10, 15 minutes to get to Coronado. So it's all very accessible. And then to just round that all out, um, there's a couple of people here in town that make a weekly trip to Price Mart and you just tip them for it, but give them your whole list. And so the things that you would typically buy Price Mart is kind of like a Costco or, you know, Target or Walmart in the United States. So we do have access to even big box stores and I don't own a car. I don't believe I need one because I walk and I love walking everywhere I go to go to the Mercado and to get the foods and things I need. And then I just give other people lists to go to these different areas and buy things for me when I need it. So um, anything is doable. Have a car, don't have a car, have other people do your shopping. It's all very affordable, accessible, and you can get anything you need as well as having things mailed to you from Amazon in the US, you know, through a mailing service. So it's really, it's all accessible. You don't miss out on anything. One of the things I so love in El Valle is actually just going for walks. One of my favorite walks is literally just at the end of my street, which ends at what's called Nisboro, which is our local zoo. But as you're walking up the street, you're looking at the mountains and there's flowering trees just showering you from both sides. And I was walking up there yesterday and as I'm looking up at the trees, there was a sloth sitting up at the top of the tree, eating leaves. And you know, you just walk and you think, oh my gosh, this is heaven on earth. I'm living in paradise. And to give you some sense of maybe comparison, um, to me, when I take walks around El Valle, it reminds me very much of the island of Kauai in Hawaii, if you're familiar with that. We have very similar vegetation, very similar types of trees and the types of mountains we have. So if you've ever been in love with the beauty of Hawaii, you'd probably really like El Valle as well. And I think people are always surprised when they come here because we're a town of 8,000 people. On the weekend, maybe we have 25,000 when all the tourists come. But I think most people think this is just a little tiny town till you start walking up and down the streets and see all these incredibly gorgeous homes and mansions that people from the city use as their weekend homes here. So, you know, whether it's seeing sloths crossing the road, lately since COVID happened, I've been seeing lots of deer running around the area here too. And between all the birds and the wildlife, you just feel like every day is a privilege and it's such a blessing to walk around El Valle. Another one of the things that people often ask and are curious about is, do I speak Spanish? And it's very interesting because now I have lived in both Panama and Mexico for a combination of almost 15, 16 years. I have taken Spanish lessons in both Panama and Mexico, and my Spanish is still, it sucks. <laughs> it's like, I speak Spanglish. I speak Spanglish very well but I speak Spanglish. And it's interesting because um, when I was building this property and I had 40 staff or 40 workers here, basically none of them spoke English, including the, um, the senior who was in charge because many of them were part of one family. 
And so I did, during the time of the construction, have a, a translator that came every morning at the beginning of the day for about one to two hours. So we could discuss everything that needed to be done, look at anything, and get the specifics of things. And then he was available by phone if I had any questions that we needed help with during the day. So I have never found it problematic myself to not be fluent in Spanish. Do I wish I was? Yes. It doesn't seem to be something that I have much ease with in becoming proficient at. So um, it's unfortunate, you know, I would love to be completely bilingual. And I, I love it when I see the expats and my friends here that do become bilingual because it's one of the greatest, I think, um, gifts you can give yourself. It's a real accomplishment as well. So, but do know that if you don't speak Spanish, you know, everyone here is super kind and friendly. They're not trying to find fault with you and they're not trying to not help you if you can't speak Spanish. They'll go out of their way to help you find someone that can understand what you need. So don't be deterred to move to another country. Well, I can't say to another country because I don't know if other places it's uncomfortable if you don't speak the language, but I have done very well with my Spanglish living in Panama. You know, I think one of the things to consider when you're contemplating living in another country, particularly if you're coming from the United States or probably even Canada, because I don't think most of us are socialized or educated to think about becoming international citizens. You know, particularly if you're in the U.S., I know because I was born and raised there, you're not encouraged to go to other countries to live. Maybe to, yes, visit, but not to live. So I would say think outside the box. Um, think, of, think of it in a different way than you've likely been socialized or culturally um, educated to believe. Because the world is a, a beautiful place. And I believe it's essential that if you want to be a well-rounded human being, you can not only experience one country. And if you really want to become a more humble human being, I think it's essential to travel to different countries where there's not as many conveniences as luxuries, where you have to learn more patience, because we get very, um, you know, egotistical and self-important when we don't travel and we don't have the experiences of seeing how other people live. So I think it's so, so essential to really having a happy, well-rounded, healthy life. And don't be afraid. People, the one question people always say to me is, how do you do it? How do you move to another country? It's like, well, you pack your stuff up and you either put it on a boat or you sell it all and you get on a plane and you go. It, it isn't as difficult as people think, particularly if you're coming to a country like Panama, because they go out of their way now to help people um, gain residency in very easy, affordable manners, much more so than when I moved here. You had to make quite a significant investment in the country when I moved here in 2005, and now it's incredibly minimal. So I would say, you know, get out of your box the world's a big place. Enjoy living in different countries. I loved living in Mexico. I love living in Panama. I'm not sure that I will ever live in the US again because I really enjoy the simplicity of these countries. I like how there's much less daily stress and life is simpler. It's kinder, it's less expensive, it's less materialistic. So there's so much to be said for exploring beyond where you were born and making yourself a more worldly person. It gives you a lot more compassion and empathy. 
So I encourage you all to do it. And if you want to come to El Valle, come visit me. Stay at my casita and I'll be happy to share more with you about the wonders of El Valle.